Hello, everyone. This is Adam. I have uploaded a few videos of my drawing process, but without na any narratives. So I guess uh, I just want to fix it uh, today. My username on YouTube is called Adam Draws Everything because I I don't really want to limit my um, drawing style or my drawing content to a certain uh, category. I started to draw when I was a little young, when I was in uh, primary school. Uh, I, I loved manga, Chinese, uh, Japanese manga, so I started to copy those uh, Dragon Ball mangas. I started to, to try to learn coloring, uh, rendering, when I got into the college. But uh, at the beginning, it was, uh, I feel really stuck. <laughs> so I sort of stopped for a period, and then later I picked it up. To push myself a little bit, I think I should uh, uh, do this regularly and uh, maybe record my process and upload it to YouTube. And so I will just explain what we'll be doing today. Uh, I was going to draw the veil, post up the veil. I like to start with a basic sketch. For me, I, I don't think the sketch has to be very perfect. I just want to make uh, everything in a repetition. Uh, because later on, when you do the rendering, you still need to fix a lot of uh, places, a lot of uh, things. So just uh, roughly get the position of the different elements. Up to this point, I think it's um, basically what I need for now. But uh, you know, sometimes I prefer to do um, a more detailed sketch. But uh, today, I will just uh, give you a, a basic outlines. Just clear a little bit, erase all those guidelines. Maybe fix a little bit details. So well, now I think I'm still in the phase of uh, drawing realistic photos. I don't really have any style, yet, at least for the coloring. Maybe for just a sketch of the manga, I do have a little bit style, you know, a little bit like a, a Dragon Ball. All the uh, slam dunk, those kind of things. <laughs> Chinese, uh, Japanese manga, and a little bit of Chinese style. For today's session, I think uh, we just stick to realist the photo. So my method is really simple. You don't need to worry about any kind of uh, brushes, custom brushes, special effect brushes. Just a regular default brush will do. Uh, I think one reason for that is because I, I just knew to the digital painting using Photoshop. Uh, I don't really have any experience with using uh, customer brushes. Uh, but I, I am really familiar with Photoshop. I, I do a little bit design before, but not drawing with brushes. I, I do with mouse is before. Now I'm using a digital pad, tablet. So for this process, uh, this part is really simple. You just uh, try to get uh, the color blocking um, basic place correct. Have a basic understanding of the light, the shadow, uh, the middle area between the light and the shadow. Uh, 
I prefer use the uh, hard brush without opacity. Opacity with pressure, because when you try to uh, getting the block get the blocking right, it's very easy to correct them. Otherwise, if you have the opacity, then you have to fresh and draw, draw, draw again and again to correct the places that you think uh, is not in the with the right color. Basically, a little bit of the clothes and the background, and then we can get into the second round. I think the first round is the easy part. I guess everybody can do that. As long as you can see the difference between colors. Even you can use a mouse to do it without a tablet. Now I just merged the sketch layer because later I will just uh, blend them in. I don't need a sketch anymore. From this point on, all the process I will do will be on one single layer. So I feel really like uh, doing uh, oil painting. It's a really uh, painter style. Because I often mix up these different layers, uh, drawing on the wrong layer, so um, it's really annoying. Sometimes I think I can do it in one layer, then I just stick to one layer. Sometimes it's, I think it's more difficult to do in one layer. Uh, for example, if you have very detailed hair going on the face, then I would prefer maybe try a different layer of hair. Maybe you have noticed that I have about four windows of photos here. Two of the painting, two of the pictures, reference pictures of the poster. And two small size, uh, two big size, two for the zoom in area, two for the zoom out view. Because when you are drawing the detail, for example, now I'm drawing the eye, I may lose the view of the whole picture if I don't have a, a zoom out view. So maybe now I'm drawing the eye, but I was looking at the zoom out view of the whole picture just to get everything correct. Sometimes you, when you draw the eye, you think, he is looking to the left, but when you look at the whole picture, he was actually <laughs> looking to uh, the middle. You know, it's a little different when you look at the whole picture. Just my personal preference. I mean, you can still zoom in, zoom out during your drawing process. I just feel it can be uh, more efficient for me. A little bit highlight of the nose, and then maybe the beer. You see, I'm picking colors from the panel. I wouldn't suggest you pick the color from the reference picture, reference photo. I think I'm still 
in the rather easy pro, uh, part face of the drawing I guess everybody can do I mean just trust process I, I feel probably every process uh, every part of the process when I do you can feel that everybody can do it now I'm trying to get rid of the uh, sketch lines you can still leave it in the separate layer and then now you just uh, turn it off you can also get the things done this is my perf personal preference So after the second round, adding a little bit of color in between, then uh, if you look at the zoom out view, the whole picture, you can basically see, um, you know, a roughly a face, a portrait, already. So to me, I mean, method, this method to me is really straightforward. First, you make sure you get sketch uh, correct. Everything is in the right position. And then you just get the color blocking correct. You know, you see the, the big block of the color. This may not be a very good uh, picture for Joe and Totoro <laughs> because the, uh, the actor, the the you know, character in this uh, movie is not a very beautiful guy. Um, I see a lot of tutorials, they are using a very beautiful babes, beautiful girls, beautiful women, a reference photo. Then, I mean, the, the result came out very uh, shining, amazing. This uh, just got the best uh, actor, leading actor uh, from Oscars. Um, I been thinking about drawing, uh, drawing him for a few weeks. I guess just want to get it done right now. So after two rounds of coloring, um, now we are in this process of adding colors in between. A little bit details. You see, when I'm doing the forehead, I enlarged the reference photo on the right corner bottom to see the forehead. But still, I will have a picture still showing the whole face, the whole head. And also, I'm looking at the whole picture of my painting. Just just to, to get the details correct, but also making sure the whole picture is correct. So I did, just did a third round of rendering. I guess the first three rounds of rendering is really straightforward. You know, just getting the color blocking and then add the middle tone in between to make this, uh, the edge between colors 
smoother. And when I try to pick the colors in between, I will just uh, sometimes I pick the color on the right side and then pick the color on the left side. And then I choose the spot in between. That's the color I was going to use. And put the color around the edge of the two colors, around the order of the two colors. Uh, sorry, around the border of the two colors. So when you add in the middle tone, A becomes smoother. That's the whole idea. Right now, I'm still using the hot brush without opacity. It's just like painting on a canvas using the oil painting brush. You see, when I try to add the tones, mid tones, I still try to, will try to fix a little bit of things. For example, the chain is not, um, seems not uh, right. Here, a little bit darker, uh, a little bit right. Maybe here, a little bit lighter. Without using custom, uh, custom brushes, it's really <laughs> uh, time consuming. So another round of rendering, it should be the fourth, I guess. I'm probably going to lose counting very soon. Mm. I feel this line is not perfect, correct. Let's fix it. Better fix it. I probably need to come back at it later as well. I mean, this part of the line is really difficult for me. The right side and the left side. I mean, for this one, it is the left side on the photo. To make a perfect uh, person portrait, you have to be able to see the difference. You have to be able to see which part is not correct. That's the first um, ability, the first process. And then you need the ability to fix it. You see, when I'm getting to this point, it's really hard to see the block anymore. It's it's already um, blended into very smooth surface of the skin, but you still can use this method to to make it smoother. And then later on, we we will use a soft brush to to get it more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Smoother, much smoother. Sometimes I feel females portrait is easier because their face is um, not very complicated. You just get a surface crack and then a little bit of highlight, a little bit of shadow, and that's, that's it, it's done. The for male character, uh, their facial characters is more complicated. 
more complex. Now I'm getting to the area around the left eye and the eyebrows. Eyebrow of the left eye. Here I'm not going to get into every single hair of the eyebrow. Just using still color blocking. I mean, here still the block will work. For the thick part, use a little darker color. Uh, for the thin part, use a little bit um, color ten, mix a little bit uh, skin color. And a little bit of shadow around the area between the eye and the nose. You know, I'm not a um, art student that learned art in a college. My major was uh, physics, so <laughs> I'm not really familiar with the bone structure, muscle names of the face. Um, I really fancy those uh, tutorials that can nail those names when they are draw the uh, specific structure of the facial parts. But for me, I would just uh, refer to the <laughs> very simple name, you know, nose, eyes, mouth, eyebrow, eyelash, those kind of things. You know what I mean. So now we are getting into a little bit more detailed coloring or fixing. Here, the cheekbone is really difficult. It's, it's just hard, so hard to get it, the light and shadow correct. I think I need to come back later a few times again and again just to fix it. I wouldn't be spending too much time here on this part right now because I still have a lot of parts to, um, to refine right now. I will come back here later. I just don't want to leave. You want to fix, fix it right now, but uh, not possible. Now it's getting to the seventh hours. Just use six hours. It takes too long. The chin still feels not correct. What's the problem? Maybe a little bit longer. I think six hours just finished half of the job is too long. I can be faster, but I need to, to, to practice. Practice more, more and more. So now I think uh, what I need to do is get the photo right, get the paintings done. That's the more important thing. So when you get to a point you will realize that even it takes longer than you expected but as long as you follow process you will get things done you can you can get the final result that you actually would very satisfy with 
So I think after fifth round of rendering, I get into a point that I think I need to fix a little bit things that uh, uh, about the outlines, for example, the left side of the face, or the right side of the face, left part of the photo, and also the chins, and also the maybe the hairs looking not uh, right in terms of if he is the character I was going to draw. Oh here, the, the forehead is another difficult part. The, the, the highlight and the shadow, you, you can see, you can tell the bone structure from the highlight and shadow. And this is not an easy part to maneuver. Maybe because the uh, Brandon Fraser, Brandon Fraser, uh, used uh, a little bit. They they used the fat suit. I think that that's what they call it, to make this character that fat, that fat. So it's a, a little bit different with the real person. The skin is a little bit different, the structure a little bit different. So it's not very familiar. I'm not really familiar with this kind of uh, structure here. I feel I make this shadow part is um, too dark. So the, the dark part and the light part, when they have this Fast, then you will have this feeling of the height difference. So the lighter part is higher than the darker part. And then, if the stronger the contrast, the uh, the bigger difference between uh, the higher part and the lower part. I think I tend to make it a lighter and the darker. At the beginning for uh, during the color blocking process because it's much easier for me to get the basic idea uh, quickly so now I have to fix that make the darker part a little lighter make the lighter part is a little darker balance them so I'm just going to fix a little bit uh, or had a greater quickly Gee, still feel this line is not um, correct. How to fix it? You know, sometimes you just feel there is always something that you can improve on a picture. You have to, you know, just get it done. When you see the place that you think is not perfect, you have to just um, get to fix it. It's always on the road of fixing, fixing. Now, if you like the whole picture, you know, the left uh, corner side, then it has the basic uh, idea of the character. Now, seven, six, I lose counting. I lost counting. <laughs> Notes that I'm still using the hard brush. There no opacity. Now, when we get into the final round or semi-final round, I probably just uh, or second final round, I probably get into the round brush and a little bit of opacity, a little bit of softness to blend the borders of the colors. Now the brush is called uh, Fire Automated Charcoal Pencil. Hmm, another difficult part. The the so-called double chain. 
feel so different. It's just so different. I guess I have to get this part again later. When I use a round brush and with opacity with softness, because this part is so smooth, there's, there's no too much change of colors. It, it's just uh, so smooth. Still feel too small, this double chain. I need to be bolder, you know, just be a little more exaggerate. Just uh, get it larger. Some people might be wondering if this actor just uh, looks at this in real life. No. Brian Fraser is really handsome guy, you know. He's just wearing a a flat suit. It's not even special effect. He's just uh, wearing a suit. It takes him six hours per day to get it on and get off. So, I guess he deserves this um, Oscars. I I didn't realize it's him. That from Tarzan, you know, I watched Tarzan. I also watched the Mummies. But uh, I didn't realize it is him. Uh, still small. More bolder, more bolder. Enlarge it. You know, sometimes when I try to design a pose, action pose, they have to be very bold. To get a feeling of the action, otherwise you don't get the um, the tension. So bolder, bolder. Now it looks uh, much more like it. And now. We can have some time on the details. A little bit hair. And then refining up the eye. And of course, the nose and the mouth, the lips, actually. This is what? The seventh is round of rendering already. So when we get the eyes, nose, and the lips, takes a, a little bit, and then we can get into the final round using the tablet, the pressure feature of the stylist to get the final with refining, polishing of the painting. So I just finished another round of fixing of the details, uh, but I was too into the um, the eyes, the view of the eye, I lose the tracking of the whole picture. So when I get into the view of the whole picture, I I feel the the eye is still not looking to the right side and not with the right emotion. So I need to fix that. Color. I need to make it a 
the red instead of dark and also the uh, the bronze same thing don't need to get into the details of the hair of the brown just using color block Now, as I said before, this chin part, the left chin, very difficult. I think the turning of the uh, from light to dark on my painting is too sharp. Because the factor, uh, the, the character is really a fat guy. It has a lot of fat on the face, it should even be less uh, sharp. But I will get back to it later as well. All right, now nose and the hair. And then I think we can get to the, the final round of refining. Of course, before that, uh, I think I still need to add a little more details for the background and the clothes. But my focus uh, for this painting is the the face, the facial features, the portrait. So I wouldn't pay too much attention on the background and clothes. Okay, so here I change it to the round brush with opacity and pressure and uh, I think it's 70% of softness or hardness. When you're using this uh, opacity, it's, it's very easy to, to blend in the edges between colors. Since I'm not paying attention too much, too much attention for the background. So, so refining of the portrait, I will start from the bottom. I will go bottom up. And then first uh, the, the upper chest, upper part of the chest, and then go to the neck, the chin, and then mouth, nose, and eyes, forehead, and hair. I think you can easily get the feeling of that using this uh, kind of brush with the opacity pressure. It's very easy to blend these colors into a coherent of uh, surface. Because I already get all the blocking and then the basic color areas in the repetition during the first uh, eight, nine rounds. So this process is just basically just uh, merge two areas into one coherent area. You need to pay very carefully attention onto the whole picture because even you get the position, get color right in the first nine rounds of rendering, but still, you can still mess up if you're not paying attention to the whole picture during the final refining process. If you notice, you will see I am being picking colors on the painting a lot. 
during this process. And we just use Alt and click on the painting to pick the color I want first, and then um, just uh, draw on the edge or border between colors. Then we will just merge or blend the very sharp line that you see on the painting that is not supposed to be there. Yeah, just like that. So here I'm getting to the 12 hours. Um, I already finished, uh, I already used 11 hours. It's a very, very slow process. Like I said, I'm still trying to improve my efficiency. Maybe later on, I will try to use some customized uh, brushes. You know, because um, the, the shape of my brush is always the same. And then sometimes I need to change the size. I don't have a flat brush. Um, I, I have actually, but uh, I just didn't get used to use it. Uh, so I have to change the size to a smaller diameter to fill the uh, very thin line. I think we got the chest done already. And then I spend a little bit of time on the chin. I left the face. I feel like I'm becoming blind. I don't know what I'm seeing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, really drawing with my feelings, with my intuition. And here, like I said, you can't just look at the uh, the window of the zoom in part because it doesn't make sense to you in this view so you really have to just pay attention to the whole picture and get a feeling of, of, of what are you doing what has been changed what's the facts like i said he wear this uh that suit so it has a very weird feel, feeling I think I need to be patient. Well, now I think I should be uh, um, accept <laughs> the current status. A little bit of refining of the ear. I haven't been fixing the ear for the whole process, I think. After all, the ear is not a very important part in terms of uh, portrait. Sometimes I just give it a, you know, a basic shape, <laughs> then uh, it's it. Also, when you use the tablet, uh, um, using this brush with opacity and pressure and softness, you really have to be be careful of how to draw the lines. Because the pressure you push on the tablet makes the difference of the color. Either it will be lighter or, or darker. That's why I prefer using the um, cut brush without opacity because it's much easier to control it. So if you use the cut brush with like opacity to get the basic things correct uh, as much as possible, the final process of the refining using the 
pressure with opacity, it will be easier. Next, I will try to fix, fix a little bit the uh, area around the eyes. Eyes and the nose, I think it's all right. Now, the forehead. I still feel the shape is not that perfect. Be patient. My experience is um, if you feel something is not right, and it is not right, you need to do something. Also, maybe some people think the color is not as same as to the reference photo. But it's not that important. I think maybe sometimes if you change a little bit of color, that's where your style comes from. And of course, uh, you can still change the shape, change the size of the eyes, the nose, the shape of the lips, the mouth. But still, different style of a color still comes with style. A little bit fix for the hair. But um, mm, not a very important. Here you can still see the lines, the crossing border between colors. So we need to get rid of that. And the wrinkles. Normally, I would just use one single layer for the wrinkle. But uh, maybe today I want to try a little bit different. You know, with a new layer, maybe it will be easier. Maybe, I'm not sure. I mean, because um, it doesn't really have too many wrinkles, it's not that difficult. Why do you know ribs? Oh. That's uh, really painful. A lot of wrinkles. I should have uh, using. I should have used a separate layer of the wrinkles on the head, more of forehead. Okay, now I'm getting into the difficult part. As I said, this bone on the forehead, a very strange bone. This is why I said maybe female character it will be easier. So here is a perfect example that even during the refining process of blending the edges, getting rid of the uh, cross border of the color, uh, different colors, you still have to pay attention to the whole picture and trying to fixing the shape, fix the shapes. I think we are probably done for the portrait. Just uh, a little bit of fixing on this part. I believe there is no much to talk about. I will just go fast forward. Right, 
I think we get all the details done. Probably. I will just go a little bit shortcut for the background using the uh, filter to make it a blur. Because we see uh, in the reference photo, the camera is focusing on the character and the background has been blurred. You can still using your brush to draw a blur effect, but um, it takes time. Hmm, it looks all right. Um, I should have uh, get a clean, more clean edge of cutting. But I can fix that. Get rid of those edges, making it seems like a little blur. Hmm. Easy. Oh my God, I, I think I forgot the lips. I need to <laughs> fix that. Uh, the refining process of the lips. And maybe another round of the hair and the eyes. Oh yeah. Ah, it just it takes uh, so long. I think uh, at this point, uh, the portrait has been done. I'm okay with it. But um, I want to give a little bit of lie at the end. And it does something on the face. <laughs> you know, just uh, a little fun. Give uh, him a little bit more color on the surface of the skin. The important thing here is you have to make sure the light of the color matches the light of the surface of the skin, of the face. For the dark part, you have to use the um, darker color. And for the light part, you have to use the lighter color. So that the color will fit on the skin. I was going to say that I would just be there and leave it, but uh, it just seemed unfinished. So I'm going to finish the nose and also the the, the chains, the the cheekbones, the cheek. No, the chains. I'll leave the chains <laughs> uh, untouched. So this is uh. 13 hours, almost 14 hours, more than 13 hours. Well, I mean, normally it takes about 10 hours around to finish a portrait. Um, I'm not sure if I'm getting more efficient after uh, drawing almost uh, 30, 40 drawings. Because I've never drawn uh, the same photo or twice. But I'm definitely feeling more confident compared to uh, to me to the very first uh, drawing that I did about three or four months ago. Okay, a little bit more color on the cheekbones. I think I'm almost done. Maybe a little bit white on on the lower part, and also on the right face. 
Also, I want to add a little bit of texture. You know, and you feel something is not that smooth on the surface, but uh, there's a little bit of uh, grains or particles on the surface. Sometimes I draw more female character, Chinese female characters. Um, it will be a little faster using my iPad. You, you see, I do have some special brushes. Maybe I, I can try a little bit, you know, play a little round. See if we can get a texture we want. It doesn't look right. Nah, not getting what we want. I'm still learning. Yeah, so customer brushes is, is really hard to master. You have to know what you are doing and you have to know where to put them, how to use them. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of uh, paintings, trying out. So I think for the beginner, it's better for them to stick to the basic brushes, the one that's easier for them to control, to master, to maneuver. I can try to add the texture using the regular brush, but uh, it takes a lot of my time. Maybe 30 hours, 40 hours, but not today. I just give up today. Okay, here, maybe a little bit white color and with a little bit texture, at least some texture feelings. So to get the green feelings, you have to get the fact of the lighting on the surface and also the shadow of the surface. You can't just follow the lighting effect of the surface of the skin. You have to make a little bit adjustment. So on this small area of the white color, you have shadows, you have highlights, and then you get a feeling of the greens. This is the first time I'm doing this without reference. I don't know how good I'm going to get. I'm just uh, going to see how it goes. I guess it looks all right, not perfect, but all right. Acceptable, I would say. <laughs> I think if I do it with a reference photo, it will be a lot better. Nowadays, it's very easy. You can just search it on Google. Maybe sometimes you can use the chat GPT, sometimes uh, use AI drawings. So it's very easy to get a reference photo. I'll try the same thing on the right face. It will be a little different because the lighting effect is different. After drawing these few strokes, I feel it's more difficult um, than the left face. So this side, the light is um, brighter. I think I have to go back and forth and try it out. Change, adjust. Anyway, I will just try to get this part done, and then I will just call it a day. I spend much more time on drawing comics book style. Not American style, but Japanese manga style. You know, those kind of a series of illustrations. You know, telling a story, those kind of things. But those um, only with sketches, only with lines and white and black doesn't look so amazing or eye-catching compared to the colorful paintings. So I want to learn this. I'm still in the process of learning, but I see big improvement. 
at the very beginning, when I tried out to painting, to paint a colorful painting, it was so terrible. I thought I was、uh, like color rendering disability. <laughs> and I gave up a few times trying to do the color rendering. But, you know, I still love drawing. I still love painting, and、uh, I just pick up again and again. And every once in a while, when I come back to painting, normally I will get a new feeling out of it. But it's not like that. I was just sitting there and thinking and dreaming. If I encountered something that、uh, gets me really struggling, I will try to find some. Materials, tutorials, to help me to overcome that, and then I will just feel encouraged, empowered, and then I will try it again. That's what keeps me drawing again and again and coming back again and again. All right, I think that's all for today. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. I will try my best to help. Bye bye for now. See ya.